Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Peter. Today I want to show you some valuable information about sound design and how to mix everything. So I actually already recorded a session where I made everything from scratch, but that video turned out to be like an hour long or something and I found it very hard to edit it correctly. So instead of uploading a video of an hour long, I will show you a very simple little project that is already into place. And with that, I'm going through every sound, every compression, sidechain. And I hope that by showing this, I can give you some valuable information that you could use in your own productions. After showing you all of the sounds, I will give you some quick tips about music production. So when producing music, whether it's hardstyle or anything like that, um, I think about the frequency range where everything fits into. In the lows, you have the bass, in the mids, you have the plucks, the chords, uh, everything in between. And then you have the high frequencies, the leads, uh, the swooshes, the effects and everything like that. So when producing, I'm thinking about filling that space up um, with the correct instruments. So now I will go into the project and I will show you what I've done. So now I'm actually in the project and I will show you what I've done. So as you see, I have everything in here. Uh, three leads, two chords, a plug and a bass. Uh, I actually turned the bass down because I have a kick over here and it sounds like this. So step by step I'm going to show you how I think about everything I do. So right now we are going to start all the way to the right side to the lead area of the frequency range that is very high. And there are many tutorials out there on how to make leads. If you'd like me to make one um, hit me up or leave a comment, um, I would be glad to make one. So what I thought about is, okay, I, I need a main sound and that's this, together with this. And they both are like that. This is a very basic and uh, generic hard cell sound and it missed something so I added this sound. And it adds a little bit of, of extra um, mids to the lead. So most of the times there's very minimal processing on the leads as I believe that if the leads sound very good on its own when it's crafted together, they don't need a lot of processing and uh, I only add like a, a compression to it. So I added an OTT to it and a small side chain. Without it, it sounds like this. And basically what a compressor does, when a sound has very big volume differences, it compresses them all together. And that's what the OTT does. So all of these three leads go to this one bus and the OTT compresses it all together. So after that I added some chords and the purpose of the chords is to fill the space up between the mid area and the lead area. Just in between there we have some highs that uh, I always need to fill up and I do that by adding some chords and these chords sound like this. So I will usually just copy the, the main melody which, is, which are these notes and then I will add some harmonies below them. And these are also just very basic super saws. Um, I only use part A, not too many voices, just a little bit of detune. And then I added a nexus. Um, I really like this particular preset because it sounds very, very harsh, crunchy, and it adds a lot of flavor to the whole, uh, to the whole sound. And I added a camel crusher on here. Camel Crusher also has a compressor on it, as you see, and it gives a little bit of distortion to the sound, which makes it more crunchier and again, adds a little bit of flavor to the sound. I EQ'd all the lows uh, out of it, and then I added a kickstart again to sidechain it. Then I have some plugs. This is also a very basic uh, sound that I made, just with a saw and a square wave. And I cut off control. Yeah, basically again, I just added some compression to it. Uh, some EQ. And again a kickstart. 
And all these sounds together sound like this. And I forgot to note that I added some reverb and delay to the lead. Uh, this is a very good uh, reverb plugin. It's called Arts Acoustic Reverb. It has a very spacious kind of feeling to it. And I really like that. And I think there are also tons of tutorials on the internet about this plugin, how to make a very good reverb with them. And otherwise you can just copy these settings. And I also added a delay bank just to add some delay to it. And with the delay and reverb, I always put a limiter uh, below it with the lead side chaining the reverb and the delay. If I turn those off, you will hear that the delay and reverb um, are not affected by the lead itself. The side chaining means that if the actual notes of the lead are playing, the reverb will go down. And if the notes are released, they will go up again. And therefore you see these little dips in here. And with the delay that's a little bit stronger. Then I routed the reverb and delay to the bus. So with the bus I can lower every volume of the reverb and delay at the same time without touching the effects themselves. Um, it gives me a lot of flexibility. And the chord bus is also routed to the same reverb and delay just a little bit, not too much. Another thing I forgot to mention is that the second lead has a stereo enhancer on it to widen the sound a little bit. So I want to conclude a few things out of this, some points I want to make. What am I actually doing here? So firstly, I'm looking at sound design and how I make the chords, how I made the lead. I'm thinking about that first. So when making a lot of sounds, I find that, are, that they are not very tight yet. And that's why I add a lot of compression to it to just flatten the sound and make one tight yeah, sound out of it. After that, I EQ most of the times, I EQ everything. Um, I, I EQ the chords, I equalize the plugs. Because the leads are playing high notes, I don't need a lot of this area anymore. I can remove all of this. When the chords are playing this area right here, I don't need this area. If I have some paths or plugs over here, um, they most of the times have a few highs left and I don't mind that. But I will always cut out the low part so that the kick or the sub can fit in there. Another tool I always use is uh, whiteness. What I mean by that is that I al always use some sort of stereo enhancer to make the sound more white or more mono, so I can divide all the sounds in that space. I always add some sidechain to the sounds to let the punch of the kick come through. Uh, I did that with the chords, with the plugs. Uh, sometimes I do that with the leads, but not so much, because I really like it when leads have a very punchy and clicky sound to them. And I think most important of all, is actually just the volume. So as I previously mentioned in another tutorial, um, I always mix around the kick. So I have the kick first, and after that I would just slowly bring the volumes up of the other elements until they uh, fit just right. And that really helps me not to lose track of uh, where the kick is in the mix. The kick is always the, the focus point of the whole track. So if we have the kick right here, most of the times in mono, I want the other sounds to go around them. That's why I widen a lot of high frequencies to make it more spacious. Now, as you've already heard, without the reverb, it really doesn't sound like anything. That's why reverb and delay is very, very important with making music. They add a lot of space to the track. Another tip I want to give you is to use a reference track. I, for example, really like uh, Wild Style's sound design and his mixing. So most of the times I just put a track of his in my project and just listen to it over and over again and comparing my own mixing with his track. Another tip I want to give is to not try to put everything in your mix. Um, if I wanted, I could add some more chords and more, some more pads, but eventually it just doesn't fit together anymore. And it's all about the volumes. So for example, the more chords you add, the more you have to lower the volume because you cannot just add a lot of chords on top of each other. Just keep it really simple, but make those simple sounds stand out. You can make tons of layers of leads, but most of the times they'll just sound a little bit messy. I just have three layers of leads and that's enough for me. And if you want, you can actually just copy what I'm doing here. I don't really mind. And eventually you will just create your own sound. And the more inspiration you get from a lot of different artists, the more your own sound will be become more visible or hearable. 
as I should say. So I really hope this tutorial makes a bit of sense. And, and if I need to make tutorials on other topics, please let me know. I am eager to make tutorials on them. I really want to know what you guys need. Just ask me some specific questions about specific sound design stuff or whatever, and I will gladly answer them to you. Thanks a lot for watching. I will actually put the FLP in the description. You can just download it there. And um, I hope you get something from it. And the last tip I want to give you is to just do this a lot. Just try to make a lot of tracks, mix a lot, um, create a lot of new sounds, mess around with other plugins like Serum or Massive or whatever. And um, eventually you will notice that your mix is getting better, that your ears are picking up things that you didn't know existed before. And then, and then if you look back a year, you will notice, oh yeah, my mix is getting better and better. So keep on creating awesome music and then I will see you the next time. Bye bye.